Hey folks, Engineer775. I'm going to do this video a little bit different. I'm starting with the finished product. We're working on an AC coupled system. This is the first one that I've been involved with, working with Gain Solar and Johnny Valentine, of course. And what we're doing is using a grid tie inverter, and I'll show you that shortly, that is located out on that solar array. It is an SMA 6.0, SB 6.0, and it is um, AC coupled to an Outback Radiant in the mech room, which I'll show you. And there's a couple other tricks here. This house um, has an automatic generator that is only hooked to uh, some of the critical circuits. It can't run the whole house. It's a Briggs and Stratton system. And in order for us to uh, not turn that generator into a motor and run it backwards, we also have to shut the solar off when the generator comes on, whether it's due to exercising on a weekly basis or just um, coming on automatically when the power's out. So one of the things we had to put in, and that's in our box over here, so uh, you can't see, I'm not going to open it up right now, but you can look up PSP. Uh, we got a, two relays in there that are picking up 120 volts from the generator. So as soon as that generator begins to crank, Sends a signal to the relay, turning the grid tie inverter off, disconnecting the grid tie inverter, and which puts it into its five minutes syncing, looking for the grid. So that keeps the generator safe. That's one thing. And I'll show you the other thing is called a remotely operated circuit breaker. So this, this system's a little bit of a mad science because there's a lot of controls and we're using the ROCB breaker to turn off the inverter as well. So for most part, that inverter is going to take every bit of power and send it back to Duke Energy. But in grid down situations or when the generator is running, we have to make sure we don't do two things. Feedback on the generator and overcharge the batteries. So the, um, and I don't want to go into too much detail. If you want more info about it, you can contact me, but uh, there's a lot. So anyway, I think it turned out nice. It's a nice, neat job, I think. And, um, and hopefully soon we'll be able to pop in their two net meter breakers because um, everything's past inspection. So let me just take you over and I'll show you the solar array. Um, we're still working on this. I have uh, put wood stoves in here and water pumps and hand pumps and so it's I've been here a lot and we have had some challenges along the way on this AC coupled system but I think we got her now falling within Alpex guidelines so oh cool I caught it it's actually um, we've been testing today with that green light on it's actually charging the batteries and it's very sunny and yes I have to this is how you control this is the switch it's a inertia switch and we are, what are we doing right now? 5,700 watts, I don't know if you can see that. And that green light will go out soon. If there's no load in the house and the battery gets set, um, full, it will, uh, you'll see that light go off. Johnny might be doing some load testing in the house right now, so she's running. So right now, we're pretending we're grid down. This grid tie inverter is being used to charge the, the battery, there it goes. So cool, we caught that. So what that means, it's not a bad thing. It means the battery, we hit that voltage and it shut the grid tie inverter off. That's rarely gonna be used. For the most part, this inverter is gonna be selling power back to the power company. So nothing special here, Solar World, 325 watt modules. And, but these, these SMAs are really nice. Um, so I've gotta get the, all the, the portal the black art stuff hooked up and get everything connected so I can actually see and um, on my phone what it's producing. Make sure I check on the systems to make sure they're working. So this is uh, okay. So with this AC coupled system, I showed you the kind of the panels, the boxes, the solar, and now I'm going to take you down and show you the mech room. Okay, now down in the mech room, you've seen the panels, you've seen the solar, the grid tie inverter, and we're using the Outback Radian with a GSLC load center with a new gizmo. Johnny said we're playing, what are we doing? Mad scientist stuff. And this is the ROCB breaker that basically won't go into the details. You can look it up yourself. That is for 
saving the battery. It'll turn when the battery voltage hits a certain uh, voltage, it turns the grid tie inverter off. Outbacks seamless. Outback seamless AC, AC coupled, coupled you, solution. You will list it across the board. So we're just doing a final on this commissioning of this job here today. We have done the generator testing and I think we're ready to go. Explained it to the customer. And uh, so I think we're it's we're been just, a doozy. It's been a doozy, says Johnny Valentine. Anything else to say about it? It's we've learned a lot, it's been challenging. If you can uh if AC coupling is best to retrofit uh, an existing grid tie system but if you want something that uh, is efficient when the grid's up but will work when the power's out then you can AC couple a system there's going to be more and more AC coupled systems coming out as as we get into the future and the Tesla and the Tesla will come and then there's going to be things like the Pika they'll get all the kinks worked out that'll, that'll be a good one so we're getting ahead of the curve. We had to. It's painful sometimes getting ahead of the curve with this technology, but we're we're getting there. Okay. A lot of times we run into people that have already invested in a grid tied system, and this picture depicts that simple solar array through a grid tie inverter out to the grid through a net metering process. Now, a lot of people sometimes they realize when they're talking to us that. When the power goes out, they did not realize that their solar investment wouldn't work. And they were never told that by the sales team, um, or for whatever reason, they just completely misunderstood that. So that's quite upsetting when you spend 20 plus thousand dollars on your grid tie system. And the power goes out, and it doesn't work. Well, that's the way they were designed. Now, there are there's a solution to that. Um, that you can take your existing system and add a battery based inverter. Let me show you a picture of that. Um, and that is basically what we've done here on this job. We took um, solar PV with a grid tie inverter and from SMA and then pass it through a battery based inverter through a critical loads panel and you can follow the arrows and this goes off to the grid. So what this allows you to do is to actually couple these two inverters. That's the AC coupling. The output from this inverter is AC. This uh, radian also AC. So you're coupling. You're putting the two inverters together in a way that allows you to, number one, efficiently send power back, net meter power back to the utility, um, because you know these these inverters are more efficient than a battery based inverter at sending power back to the grid I find. I have a radian that is DC coupled and that is basically this picture where you have solar charge controllers charging a battery when the battery hits a cell voltage it, this inverter inverts sells the power back to the grid. Well you can take that same inverter couple it to a grid tie inverter and there's a lot of different manufacturers that have solutions out there this is just one so maybe you're in a situation where you invested in a grid tie system and you you know things have changed either with your net metering um, at with your utility company or they've just changed time of use whatever um, things change uh, we just want I just wanted to share with you there are um, ways to fix or uh, complement what you already have and that is to couple a battery based inverter to your grid tied system and that's what we did on this job and so that's that's basically it now the controls um, get into the fun part and I won't get into too much there's some guidelines for how much solar you can have on your system uh, what size your battery should be how many strings and thus forth um, and so we just went with Outback's uh, AC coupling guidelines and built this system. And um, some of the controls, things that are on here are this. We had a generator running part of the home's uh, circuits. So we had to make sure we didn't turn that into a motor and backfeed the power from the AC uh, from the grid tie inverter onto that. So anyway, I've already showed you those. So I just want to show you some schematics. So you're basically taking your grid tie system coupling it with a battery based inverter and a critical loads panel of course a battery and then sending power back to to the grid it allows for battery charging maybe not as efficient as the charger that's in the unit on the battery based inverter or or as efficient as a charge controller an MPPT charge controller but it still allows you to charge the batteries 
in a grid down situation. Near 775 on the next job with a new twist. We are uh, doing what is called AC coupling. We haven't done an AC coupled job. We'll show you all that, but out here is our standard Schleder ground mount we're getting ready to put in. Also excited to save on, hopefully saving some time, saving concrete. We have invested in some augers. So we have a 12 inch bit and we've got a two inch bit for the mini excavator. So looking forward to showing you that. That's a, that's a nice addition. We have the extensions so we can, we can get down there seven, eight feet, no problem. X marks the spot. I could have done them all with this, but we're playing with the, the new augers. Nice. We're, this is saving so much concrete from the way we've been doing it. set our do our concrete work get the schleder pre-built trenches are in and backfilled conduits are in i should say all the way up to the house and uh we got just a couple more things to mount some pull boxes the inverter brackets on i'm gonna do one more little strengthening of this here i'll be locked in trim everything off and build this array tomorrow. Oh. Oh. Well, she's going to be a good array. Here's uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. Clear sailing. We're going to put solar on it today. This is the beginning of day two. And sun arcs over there. And the house just gets it. Oh, we got a good, good solar window here. So we we'll put these solar worlds on this baby today. They were so nice to get here before, and they put straw down, so we're not getting in the mud. Okay. Looking forward to another good day of working on solar. Again, this... All right. Panels mounted. Solar World 325 XL Monos. I'm going to cut these rails. This maze hanging. Chris is boogieing. The Unistrut mount, kind of copied the last one we did. This is super, super strong. The mech room roughing out for our critical loads panel, which is here. And there's a lot of circuits in the house, so you have to kind of negotiate with the homeowner to figure out which circuits they want in there. But we're putting well pumps and freezers and food, and they have a really nice generator that's gonna go in here, which brings me to my point that one of the features of the Outback Radian, if you have an automatic transfer switch with a generator, if the power goes out, 
Um, in our system, we do not want to feed back on the generator, so we need to sense power um, from the relays in the automatic transfer switch. In this case, I believe we're dealing with a Briggs & Stratton generator. We have nothing to do with that, but we need to be able to uh, not back feed onto the generator. So the outside work we're doing before we button it up, we've got to put a uh, consumption meter in here. Um, Duke power requirement. There's our shutoff disconnect for the for the SMA inverter. We've got a transfer switch for the generator on the right. We've got to pick up uh, a 12 volt signal from there when the and, uh, generator kicks on, the output from the radian will turn off. And we've got a bunch of solar, solar coming up the two inch, communication coming up the three quarter, and we got a bunch of LBs in here for running um, everything down into our mech room. I think that is it. And uh, so, and then we have. Our ground mount, which has got a great solar window, and we got to put a disconnect. It's got the SMA grid tie inverter. We got to put another disco out there and start pulling our wires. But not too bad, about 100 foot away. And we're just new construction. Always got to juggle working around everything else going on here. So, but this is going going well. It's been nice to work. Nice to work with a contractor. It'll tell us when things are happening, like drywall and. To be able to get in before the drywall was just a, you know, a gift. And then we were able to get our all our pipes running before they did a lot of work. So that helps tremendously. We always, if we're working on new projects, if we can get in there, before, work with the electrician, work with the contractor, boy, oh boy, it make makes everything look nice, looks professional, and a lot of fun. Retrofitting is what we no, do normally, but new construction is, is fun.